I'm Patty Simpson with Simpson Math. In this video, we're going to learn about the order of operations. So when we have an expression where we have multiple things that we need to do in that expression. So for instance, in this one, we have multiplication, we have subtraction, exponent, division, addition, and subtraction. So we have multiple operations there that we need to perform. Well, if we don't all do them in the same order, we may end up with different answers. So we have a set of rules that we play by here in math or an order of operations that we um, perform. So we're going to do these operations in a specific order to make sure that we all end up with the same answer. And that order is here. And some of us have a, a mnemonic device or an acronym to help remember. So maybe you, you know this uh, mnemonic device of please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Or maybe you know the acronym of PEMDAS, P-E-M-D-A-S, to help you remember this order. And the order is, first we do parentheses. So anything inside the parentheses, we're going to perform first. Sometimes those parentheses may actually look like something other than parentheses. They may look like a radical, or they may look like an absolute value sign, or they may look like a fraction where you've got something underneath the vinculum or a, on top of the vinculum. So our parentheses sometimes are not exactly parentheses, but grouping symbols. Then we're going to look at our exponent and perform our exponents. So for instance, like this exponent there, then we're going to do our multiplication and our division. Notice that multiplication and division are on the same line, and that's because we're going to do multiplication and division from left to right. Whichever one comes first, that's the one we're going to do first. And then we're going to do addition and subtraction, and the same thing is going to be true there, where we're going to do that from left to right. So when I'm performing my order of operations, I kind of think of it like the Game of Thrones. I'm trying to get to the throne. And the very first thing we have here is our parentheses. That's like our king. And we're going to kill off that king first somehow or another. Maybe the king has some sort of hunting accident. So then someone else is going to take over the throne because we're trying to get to it. So in this example here, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look inside my parentheses for something there to perform. Here I have 4 minus 2. So I'm going to do that procedure inside the parentheses first. So that I have 3, and then 4 minus 2 is 2. I'm leaving everything else exactly the same. I'm just doing inside the parentheses first. We've now killed off the king. He had that hunting accident. And so now the queen takes over. Our exponents then are our queen. So we're going to look to see what can happen to our exponents. We're going to take care of that exponents next. So 2 squared is equal to 4. So now we have 4 times 3. Everything else I'm going to leave exactly the same as I had before. So, you know, our queen uh, got a chicken bone stuck in her throat while she was eating dinner or something because while she was eating her dinner, she passed away. How sad, how tragic. So now, who takes over the throne? Well, their kids take over. The prince gets to take over, and it depends on which prince was born first. If multiplication was born first, then he's the one that takes over. If division was born first, then he takes over. So I always think of this as my Game of Thrones because it depends on which prince is oldest. The oldest one gets to take over. So going from left to right, I'm going to look for my multiplication and division. In this case, notice that I still have parentheses, but these parentheses are not a grouping symbol where I have something inside to perform. This parentheses just really means multiplication. In fact, I could rewrite this sentence this way, or that expression this way, where that parentheses just means multiplication. I'm going to perform it from left to right, so I'm going to do my multiplication first. So 3 times 4 is 12. I leave everything else exactly the same. I still have division. So you know one prince um, passes away 
Um, he just didn't wake up the next morning. Not sure what happened. That pillow looked a little fluffy, but um, then, so, but we have another print. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this division next. But notice that multiplication and division I'm doing from left to right. So here I have 12 divided by six, which gives me two. So both of my princes now have passed away. Then I'm left with the princesses are going to take over the throne. And before I can take over the throne, I must first get rid of those princesses. And it's the same as the princes, that it depends on which one was born first. If addition comes first, then we perform addition first. But if subtraction was born first, then we do subtraction first. In this case, my addition is first. 2 plus 3 is 5. And then finally, I'll do 5 minus 7 which I have five things. If you think on a number line, if I'm at number five and I go back seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, four, three, two, one, zero, one, I mean, negative one, negative two, that's equal to negative two. So as I perform those order of operations, I end up with a negative two. And if we all do it in that same order, we will all end up with negative two. So this is the order we'll always go in. Parentheses are grouping symbols inside of those, inside those grouping symbols. Then our exponents, then multiplication and division from left to right, and then addition and subtraction from left to right. Let's do another example. So first I'm looking for my parentheses. 12 minus three is nine. So I'm going to do that subtraction, and I leave everything else the same. So 2 minus 9 divided by 3 squared times 4 plus 5. Next, I'm going to look for exponents, and I'm going to take care of any exponents. Here I have an exponent of 3 squared, which equals 9. Everything else stays exactly the same. So I have 2 minus 9 divided by that 9 times 4 plus 5. Next, I'm going to look for multiplication and division from left to right. So going from left to right, I see that there's division first. So I'm going to take care of this division first. So that negative 9 divided by 9 leaves me a negative 1. Everything else stays exactly the same. Now, I still have uh, multiplication and division because there's still a multiplication here. So I'm now going to do this multiplication. So a negative 1 times 4 leaves me a negative 4. Leave everything else exactly the same. I've taken care of my multiplication and division. Last but not least, I'm going to take care of my addition and my subtraction. Again, I'm going to go from left to right. So 2 minus 4, if you need to use that number line, use that number line. 2 minus 4 is a negative 2. And then negative 2 plus 5, again, if you need to use the number line, use that number line. Negative 2 plus 5 gives me 3. So we will all end up with 3 if we always use this order of operations. So we use that order to make sure that we all end up with the same answer. Hope that helps. Math made simple. Simpson Math. Thanks for watching.